Hey guys and welcome back to Battlefront updates and another monthly Patreon Q&A, the series where I simply answer my Patreon's questions and then upload it here on YouTube. As always a huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for supporting me every month, it really means a lot and it does help out more than you might imagine. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself you can find all the info in the description below, although I will have some changes coming to that pretty soon depending on when I get access to some new YouTube features which are pretty cool but I'll probably talk more about those in a later video. But before I get into my Patreon's questions here on my phone I want to clear up two things that uh, a lot of people keep asking me. First off where is the setup video? Where is the apartment tour that I've promised? Well I'm still waiting for one key part which is my studio lights um, and that's why the light is pretty bad in this video and I'm sorry about that. I'm using my table lamp right now which is just painful as hell in my eyes. I just looked straight into it and I was like a black dot on my eye. Um, but yeah, I'm waiting for those studio lights and when I do get them I will make a, um, a tour and I will also be able to use this green screen hopefully if the lights are strong enough. So I'm very excited for that. It's been delayed and delayed but they are actually supposed to deliver them tomorrow if everything goes well but the Swedish postal system is pretty bad so it wouldn't surprise me if they fail yet again. And secondly a lot of people ask me about the updated top uh, the tips and tricks video which I've talked about a little bit in my streams and on Twitter. I am still working on that it's gonna take a while but I've compiled a list of around 40 tips and tricks right now which I'm working on comp uh, in actually scripting a video for it and then of course recording everything I need which is gonna take a very long while. Uh, but I'm hoping to have it in, I hope have it up within a couple of weeks. The good thing now is that I can do it based on the basically the last patch for Star Wars Battlefront, which and I don't think there's going to be any major changes after that. So stay tuned for that. It will be coming out sometime soon, and it will contain a lot of new tips as well as an updated version to many of the old tips I talked about. But now let's get into the Patreon questions. First off, I had a question both from Jared and Jorge who asked regarding um, The Last Jedi and my speculation about it. I've already made a video about it but I've had a lot of time to think after that and also I've watched a lot of other videos on YouTube talking about it and I gotta give props to Alex from Star Wars Explained because I thought his speculation was real good and when I saw, saw that video I was like I think I believe the same thing as you do because he talked about The Last Jedi not being that Luke dies or something like that but simply that the, the term Jedi will not be anymore because you know Kylo Ren and um, uh, I was about to say Darth Plagueis but I mean Snoke they are not Sith they are something new and I think this might be the same thing whereas Luke is the last real Jedi but he will teach uh, Rey in another way in a new type of way something that Alex brought up was the uh, the thing about attachment and feelings to other people like yeah, relationships which was something the Jedi was not allowed to have but that's still what made Anakin or Darth Vader turn back to the light so it's, it might be a good thing and and he's he speculated that when when Luke taught Kylo Ren on, and the Knights of Ren and all those apprentices and they you know, he failed with that he might realize that okay I can't do it with the old Jedi ways we need something new so he basically suggested that Rey will not be a Jedi, but she will still be a light uh, force user, if that makes sense. And I thought that was a really good speculation, which I completely agree with. I will leave a link to his video in the description below if you want to watch it yourself. Uh, Marcus asked, we know you attended a playtest at DICE in October. Is that something you can talk about now? I'm guessing it was for the Scarif... Wait, in October? I'm tr October? Wasn't that when I went to... LA to play Scarif. I did do another playtest which I was allowed to say that, that I did a playtest but unfortunately I can't say what that was. Uh, that was not one of the game changer events but this was something like a playtest where they basically send out to anyone you kind of like invite your friends you know and if you live in Stockholm you can do that or if you live in any other uh, town where they have a playtest such the EA office simply. So no unfortunately I can't talk about that and I'm not sure if I ever will be able to. Uh, and just adding to that, he also said it would be interesting to know what was different from the playtest compared to the final product. Uh, for all the DLC, uh, for all the DLC events we've been to, um, that's basically been the final version we've played. So for Scarif, well, all the four DLCs we played a couple of weeks before the release, so that's been the final version. It wasn't. It was only the the base game 
that we got the chance to play early and give feedback to changes. We gave feedback to changes um, to the DLCs as well, but that was at the point where they couldn't change it for the release, but it had to be for a patch. So uh, unfortunately, it was only for the base game that we, we were able to give feedback. Or actually, when I think about it, I was actually at DICE office, at least for the best bin and Death Star DLC, I think it was. Or was it just Best Bin? I'm not sure. Where I, actually, I got to try it early and give some feedback, but I don't think I can talk about exactly what was changed. I don't quite remember that either. <laughs> it wasn't like I said, okay, add that, and they did it. That's not really how it works. I think this was a very interesting question from Han Wu. If we're going to get a story campaign in Battlefront 2, which one do you think is better? A story based on infantry or heroes? Do you think the story should be canon or non-canon? I just... I feel it's very hard for me to decide on this, but I feel like for Battlefront and the kind of game it is, and especially the Twilight Company Battlefront novel, I feel like it would be cool to see a story from a normal trooper's perspective, but that adds, that's still a canon story. So it's basically, basically like reading these novels or comic books about characters that we didn't know about, but they kind of become an important character in their own story, if that makes sense. I think that would be a really cool way to portray it. And maybe the heroes could be some side characters that comes in some missions and you can play them just during that. But in overall, you might follow just a rebel or a, a uh, First Order Stormtrooper through their entire journey. Because uh, I feel like movies, comics and all that kind of stuff, they, all, they will already explain the, the main character's story so well that it's kind of weird to have another campaign because then it has to be the same story and that wouldn't be that much fun, if that makes any sense. Marcus asks, if you could choose three hero skins that would be added to the game, which ones would you pick? Honest, honestly, I've been thinking about it for a while now and for some reason I just can't come up with any good suggestions. So I'm just going to go with the three we were supposed to get, which is Han and Luke Stormtrooper skins and then Leia's Death Star skin. I think those would be pretty cool and that's something that really is missing. And something else that would be cool is Leia's... Bausch, Bausch skin. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce uh, that bounty hunter's name, but basically the one she had in Jabba's palace with, you know, the weird helmet and the um, voice, voice changer and stuff like that. That skin would also be cool. Um, but I think those are the ones I can come up, come up with right now. I'm probably going to come up with something after this video that I'm going to be like, oh, that wasn't obvious. Why, would, why didn't I pick that? Marcus also asks, what are your favorite movies? And you can't include a Star Wars movie. I would probably say... Overall, Quentin Tarantino's movies, I absolutely love them. Django, The Hateful Eight, uh, Inglorious Bastards, Kill Bill, all of those are fantastic in my opinion. Um, but I also love Lord of the Rings. Hobbit movies are good, but not as good as the originals. Uh, other than those, I kind of like sci-fi, um, I guess like alien movies. Not, not the alien movies per se, I'm not a huge fan of those, but I do like the or the Independence Day, the original. I actually haven't seen the new one because I've had so much, heard so much bad things about them. And I also like the Predator movies. Um, so I guess that's sort of some of my favorite movies. Uh, Terminator as well, I love, that, love those. But I don't have any of these like super, these are my absolute favorite movies I've watched 500 times, except for Star Wars, of course. <laughs> Jorge asks, what's your favorite Star Wars movie sequence other than OP Darth Vader in Rogue One? Uh, I would probably, have to say, I really like everything about Palpatine in, in Revenge of the Sith. So both when he talks about Darth Plagueis and when he seduces Anakin to the dark side. Um, but I also love Tarkin in Rogue One. I don't know why, I like searched up those scenes online just to watch them again. I didn't care about Tarkin at all after A New Hope, but it's something about Rogue One. I don't know if it was the technology about making him CGI or if it's just his character in Rogue One. I just loved every single scene with Tarkin in them and Krennic as well. So I would have to say this basically scenes with Palpatine and Tarkin in Rogue One would probably be my favorites and in terms of like non-fighting scenes I guess you could say but also Yoda versus Yoda versus Palpatine is pretty awesome as well. And then we have a question from Jorge um, who says that we got a last bug fix and rebalance patch how does it compare relative to your expectations? Seems like uh, a lot of the big broken things got taken care of. Anything else big left? And the next question, just to 
get them both at the same time from FUPA is if you could make one balancing tweak to the infantry combat system, weapon star card or trait, what would it be? So first off, I think they did nail that patch pretty much because there's no major glitches now. However, I still think they need to fix that freaking bug where you can merge infantry with heroes. Like, I don't know, I don't want to say exactly how you do it because it's freaking annoying. But you can do that to basically get infantry, uh, like, um, I mean, infinite secondary fire and those kind of things, which is really frustrating. So those bugs still need to be fixed, although they are not very common. But if we talk about balancing, there's still basically one main thing I think they need to fix, which is the EE4. They need to reduce the damage with maybe 20% or something. Make it slightly less powerful, because now everyone is using it, which is a little bit boring. Um, but another thing that I personally want nerfed is the Pulse Cannon. I think it's way too accurate right now. I hate when you can just get shot across the map from the air. It shouldn't be that way. I don't, I don't like when there's super cheesy stuff in the game that you cannot block even with Bodyguard trait level 3 and back the bomb, which is kind of frustrating. So I think they should at least make it so that if you're in the air, you shoot the, the shots go off. You can't just be in the air and snipe someone across the map. That doesn't make sense. And also maybe make it a little less accurate if you're moving or have a longer charge up time. I'm not sure. I just think it needs a slight nerf. But I think that's all. Other than that, I think it's in a pretty balanced state right now, especially the heroes. Uh, the heroes versus villains is a lot of fun right now. And that slight nerf to Chewie was very well needed because he can't just wreck every single enemy hero in two seconds anymore. But that brings this Q&A to an end. We will see if there will be another Patreon Q&A next month or not. As I talked about uh, in my pr last Q&A, there is some pretty cool features that YouTube are working on. It's out for some people and my network is still working on getting them for me because when I add when they add those, Patreon is kind of gonna be outfaced, I guess you could say. But yeah, as always, a huge thank you to my Patreons and for all of you who are watching this video and for the support on my channel, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and as always, may the force be with you.